Hey everybody, this is Dave, and I'm going to do another tutorial here uh, of a setup that I've got in Foundry VTT. Sometimes to learn a tool, I have to give myself a project. I have to kind of get the kinks out, you know, do something that doesn't necessarily have a clear tutorial. Now that I understand how walls and all those things, you know, from my past video, invisible walls, ethereal walls, uh, you know, terrain walls work, what I'm going to be able to do is apply that knowledge, and I'm going to do it by doing something very familiar, but maybe a little atypical for D&D. Which is I'm going to use Foundry VTT to build out the first dungeon of the Legend of Zelda. So I've got a you know a screenshot here of the Legend of Zelda that was put together. It's one of the standard ones on the internet, uh, and it's got the monsters and stuff. It doesn't have those removed. That's okay. I'm just doing this mostly to mess with the dynamic lighting. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to have the DM view and I'm going to show all that. But first, let's use it from the player view. So I go to a different tab. I get the player up. I can you know, click on the player and I can start moving around with my arrow keys. And I didn't map out these little, you know, players generally have to not put their characters on terrain that is just a, a impeding their movement. But I've got it set up with an ether real wall in between here, this room, and that room. And I've got invisible walls stopping me from walking up the wall or walking into the wall here. I'll show that on the DM tab. So I've got normal walls, the block line of sight between the rooms. I've got ethereal walls for these tunnels. And then I've got invisible walls to stop me from walking into this wall area, which I don't people want people to walk in. So that's pretty cool. That worked really well. Now let's see what I've got going over in this room. There's these big blocks. And what I decided to do is have those blocks block line of sight. But it, it can be really unclear to players you know, what's going on in a room if you just use walls for those. You want to see the obstruction but then not be able to see past it. So I'm going to use terrain walls, which is something that's only in Foundry VTT to my knowledge. Uh, that was not in World 20 when I was using it. So if I go over there, I go through this ethereal wall that's the tunnel. And then over here, that, you know, the block in the middle of the room is tall enough that it's blocking my line of sight and hiding the skeletons behind it or something. But I can't, you know, I can't walk up into it. Great. All right. So and I think I've got two of those going on. This room is rigged pretty well. Okay, cool. So let's go back over and let's check out the door. So the door is also sort of in a tunnel. So I kind of want it to act. I don't want to be able to see into the next room when I open it. I don't want to walk into the wall, but you can see this little door icon there. And uh, I should have the audio rigged this time so you can hear the sound. So I'm using a tool called Ambient Doors. All right, so let me make sure that the audio is turned on. I've got Ambient Doors turned on. So if the door's open, I can now step through it like an ethereal wall, and I can use the E key to do that with a key press uh, for the players that don't want to take put their hands on the mouse too much. I got another wall over here. That one's working really well. Now you go into this room, and maybe you're going to be distracted by all those. Now if I had a secret door set up, uh, I could maybe use a tile to cover it up and then hide the tile, uh, but I was going to do that artwork. But let's just pretend there's no crack there. Maybe the player has to interact with it, or it's bomb, or you know, go and detect a secret door and then pick the lock or something. Over here, on the way that I implemented this on the GM tab, is I've got the same sort of ether real wall spanning it, but then I've got a uh, this is a invisible wall that is also a secret door, and that's an invisible wall that's also a secret door. There's also just a secret door spanning them. So if I go into the non-line of sight view, you'll see those three doors there. So if the player you know, completes all the skill test or you know, the perception checks and things to really spot the secret door there, as the DM, now all I have to do is go in the DM tab, I'm gonna go and just unlock those three doors. The players will hear a sequence of, oh wow, the DM just unlocked a whole bunch of stuff for me. And now I can walk through the secret door to the other side but maybe I have to remember it's there. Uh, I don't know, that's kind of, uh, it's up to the player if you really want to do the tile work uh, to maybe make an overlay that you put on top of this and then make invisible uh, with the hide button uh, to, to hide it. So now, if you remember your Legend of Zelda well, you know that there's a door here that stops you. It's only, it's a one-way door effectively. And the art shows it. When you walk through, it kicks you out into this room, and then this door slams shut behind you. So, let's do that. I walk through, 
and then it's an ethereal wall. But oh no, I can't go back. So I'm going to click, click, click. Can't go back. I'm going to drag the mini. There's no, nope, sorry, you can't go back. With the E key, there's no real door there. No door was found. Let's see how I implemented that. So that, let's go to the dynamic lighting layer here. So that is an ethereal wall, but then right after it is a one-way invisible wall. So that's an invisible wall, not a door. That's an invisible wall that has the wall direction set to right. If I set it to left, it would be a one-way door, so a one-way kind of thing you could walk through in the other direction. But I'm going to set it to right, and right versus left doesn't make, I don't know if it, it's winding based on the order of which one of these edges is, is the major one. So if I rotated this up, would it do it? Yeah, look, hey, that's pretty cool. That's a, that's a good implementation. It keeps the general rightly direction. What does it do when it's horizontal? Uh, yeah, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense when it's horizontal. Well, we'll just deal with that there. Um, maybe, oh, actually it did look like it turned. Let me, let me check that out. Do that. Does it? I thought I saw it turn. Because it doesn't make any sense. to. Uh, it kind of turned. All right, I'm sure it works if I mess with it enough. All right, we'll leave that alone. So now let's go back to the player view. And I think I've done everything. I think I've, I think I've shown uh, navigating around on my own. I've shown going through a one-way door. I've shown going through a secret door. I can unlock doors myself, say, like, I can just tell the GM that I've got the key. This door in Legend of Zelda only opens when you push this block. So maybe I would just treat that like a secret door. But let's, let's move past that and go over here. I like how it scrolls uh, when, when you get to the edge of the screen. It's pretty cool. Kind of wish it would do it when you got to the edge of the bar, though. Um, so I've kind of mapped out the rest of the dungeon, uh, though I haven't necessarily filled in all the details. I get to get closer to the door to open it there. For this map, I might extend the, uh, the arm's length setting so that you, you have to be within two, not just within one and a half to open a door. And this, this room looks pretty cool because I've got lots and lots of terrain wall things blocking it. So I can see the blocks. It's clear to me what's blocking my line of sight. But uh, there we go. And then we get to the end. We know this is the boss room. Right? And you fight the dragon, get to the end, and there's a door here, and it's a locked door. you got to fight the dragon first. So from one away, I'll hit the E key the lock sound. Hopefully the audio is picking that up. And then it's the GM. I say, oh yeah, you defeated the dragon. Interesting how the GM doesn't pick up that animation until I bring the tab back. I guess it went inactive or something. Get back here. Move the guy away from here. Back. And then in player setting, I right click the locked door to unlock it. I can even unlock the player. And this one, because you know, I wanted to make it really clear that you can get through. Maybe I do it when the monster dies automatically or something. I did not put an each real wall up because I wanted it to be really clear. Hey, look, it's the end of the dungeon. So players with big light can see all the way through. I put some invisible walls around these blocks, not terrain walls, because I want people to get that anticipation of walking up to get the Triforce. And there you go. So uh, we did it. We just played The Legend of Zelda in Foundry VTT a little bit. Um, you know, no monsters or anything, but being able to go through some of those walls and, and figure that out uh, was a good use of thinking, hey, should I use terrain walls for the walls? No, that didn't work out very well because it was really hard to hide the secret doors, um, but I was able to figure out a bunch of other stuff. All right, folks, um, you know, subscribe if you want to keep kind of exploring these with me. Well, I guess one last thing I uh, should probably do. It's really, really important to Foundry is the modules. Let me show the modules that I'm using uh, to do those two. So the, the two that I've got enabled, I guess I'm go to settings. I gotta manage my modules. So I've got ambient doors, that's what makes the sounds. And I got arms reach, that's what makes it so I can use the E key. There's also a setting in there to double press, like double tap the arrow keys to open a door. And that is a mess, That that's not good. Uh, I, I didn't like that, uh, the feel of that, so I turned it off. So if I go to my module settings, I can show where I've got that a lot of stuff turned on right now, which is probably part of the reason it's going slow. I, I, I'm going to have to performance test how fast this is with and without modules. But Arms Reach has uh, the global maximum distance for interaction is 1.5. For this map, I might set that to 2 just so you can open it from 
you know, without walking into the well of the door. Um, notifications, hotkey E, the interaction double tap delay set all the way to zero, which means that um, you know it, it's basically turned off, becomes more or less sensitive to how fast you have to double tap for it to be considered a double tap. Uh, and then maximum door uh, interaction distance doesn't really matter because I've got that turned off. There's also a hotkey E to center the camera. I never figured out how to get that to work. I don't really need it. All right, so that's it. Uh, subscribe if you want to follow along as I play around with more settings. Uh, but this is a lot of fun. So, uh, uh, you know, hope people have fun following along and, you know, seeing how we apply stuff, uh, you know, when building out uh, stuff for D&D games. Cool. See ya.